Abu Dhar was very beloved to the Prophet ﷺ. The Prophet ﷺ, when he was passing away, he took the hand of Abu Dhar and he placed it on his chest. The Prophet ﷺ gave Abu Dhar some amazing nasihas. And I'm going to go through some of the nasihas that the Messenger of Allah ﷺ gave. Seven nasihas he gave to Abu Dhar. Abu Dhar anh, says, Qala amarani khalili bi sab'in. My beloved Khalil, my friend, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam commanded me for with seven things. Amarani bi hubbil masakini wa dunuwi minhum. He told me, love the poor people and remain in their company. Abu Dhar, wallahi, out of all the Sahaba, was the champion of the masaki. The masakin loved Abu Dhar al Ghifari radiallahu anhu. Wa amarani an anzura ila man huwa duni wa la anzura ila man huwa fawqi. The Messenger of Allah, and this is such a beautiful nasiha. He said, the Messenger of Allah told me to look at those who are below me and never look at those who are above me. Dunya. Because as long as you look at those who are below you, you will be in a state and, and in a state of contentment. And as long as you look at those who are above you, because there will always be people who will have more dunya than you, you will never be content. And then he said to Abu Dhar radiallahu anhu, wa amarni an asila rahim wa in adbarat. He said, Messenger of Allah told me to reconcile ties. He said, beautiful. Reconcile ties were in adbarat, even if your family members turn away from you. Now this is the kamal in it. It's easy to be good to people who are good to you. But it's more difficult that family member who shuns you, that family member who doesn't give you time, who never rings you, you pick up the phone and you ring that person and say, how are you? How's your day been? And this is the teaching of the deen. The teacher of deen to attain Jannah is not cheap. Those family members who don't give you the time and you go to visit all your rich relatives, but you never go to visit those relatives who have nothing. And you know what I'm speaking about. You got no time because they got no status in society because by your criteria, wealth is everything. The Messenger of Allah said, reconcile ties even if they turn away from you. In another narration, the Prophet wasallam said, Allah elongates the life of that person who reconciles ties. Allah will elongate your life, make your life longer. If you are destined to live 40 years, Allah increases that life. And then he says that the Messenger of Allah said, amarani an la asala ahad. That the Messenger of Allah told me, don't ask anybody for anything. Amarani an aqool al haq walau kana murra. And he commanded me, listen Abu Dhar, speak the truth even if people find it bitter. No Allah, there was anyone amongst the Sahaba who spoke the truth. Everybody disagreed with Abu Dhar on certain things. But he spoke the truth even if people disliked. He confronted Muawiyah, he confronted Uthman radiallahu anhum, and he spoke what he believed to be the truth, even if those people found it bitter. وَأَمَرَنِي أَلَّا أَخَافَ فِي اللَّهِ لَوْ مَتَلَائِمْ And the Messenger of Allah said to me, O oh Abu Dhar, listen, do not fear what people will say about you. La ilaha illa. So speak the truth and never give a damn about what people will say about you. You know, we spend our life, honestly, we spend our life Worried about what people think about us. If honestly, honestly, you were gonna die tomorrow, okay? How many things in your life you would have wanted to do, but you didn't do because you were too worried about what people would say? And if death was to befall you tomorrow, wallah, you would think to yourself, you know, I wish I'd done this and I wish I'd done this, but then it's too late. Don't care about people. You know why? Because people are never pleased. You can never please the people because people need to put you down to feel good about themselves. That is the nature of many people. For their own reassurance, they have to live off your failures. So do not allow what people say to stop you from doing what is good. And then the last thing he says that the Messenger of Allah commanded me that I recite La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah profusely for inna hunna kanzun min tahtil arsh because it's a treasure under the arch of Allah subhanahu wa 